Hello people, welcome back to the, the Hypernode uh, developer preview uh, podcast. We, we have a new nice feature to show you guys. Um, we've been working very hard on a uh, new feature in the control panel. Uh, and this is the, uh, the vertical auto scaling feature. So um, I have a Hypernode over here uh, that we can look at. You can see in this overview there's a high load. Uh, well, not anymore, but. So we, we can do some things now that uh, used to be a manual action, but now it's automated. So on Hypernode, we have different types of hosting plans. We have uh, cloud hypernodes, we have dedicated servers. Uh, those all have different characteristics. Uh, you know, with the cloud hypernodes, you're a bit more flexible in, in easily scaling up and down. If you're um, migrating between dedicated server plans, it means we actually have to copy data from uh, diff different physical servers and it takes a longer time. But in the cloud, we can do things like detach a floating IP and detach a disk to a bigger instance. And that actually goes pretty quickly. Um, so we said, okay, it would be nice if we can do this in an automated way when it's necessary. So if your site is busy, maybe you want to upgrade to a bigger hosting plan, but maybe you want to get ahead of that and do it before it actually uh, uh, is too late to do it. Because if it's already uh, a high peak moment when you have a lot of traffic, you want to be on a bigger plan already. So, uh, well, we used to have uh, something for this already, which was the, uh, the API. And using the API, you could do things like, for example, uh, change your hosting plan by just doing an API call. And you could even say, I want to go to the next uh, biggest hosting plan. I think this is even in the readme in this uh, in library that we have. So you can see, uh, give me the, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So here it says, get, get next best plan for app. So uh, this would be the next bigger plan in the, uh, in the line of, of hosting plans. So more CPUs, more RAM, things like that. And then you could automatically X create to that. So the X stands for up or down. So in this case, you would go to the, an upgrade, a bigger hypernode with more CPUs and more RAM. Um, but then you could, you know, maybe program something to make this happen when you want this to be done. So maybe in your case, it's a CPU or maybe it's, it's RAM. If memory is low, then do this action. So uh, people have been doing this. They have been automating against this API. Uh, so if you have an API, if you have a hypernode, you always have an iPad API token as well. So um, if you do like hypersystem, you have CTL settings you're actually interacting with the api and you can do all these things like uh setting settings but also doing this uh this x gate action and uh, so by the way there is also high uh what is it so ctl x -grade? yes so this is basically the same thing this is that api but uh in a neat command line tool you can easily use um and you can actually see all the different plans that are available but uh, so maybe maybe this is all a bit too involved. Maybe you're like, well, I don't want to program anything. I don't want to use the API. Uh, I just want it to work. Uh, so we, we made this page here where uh, this is actually very easily enableable and disableable without any programming. So uh, for example, if I would pick this hypernode here, uh, I could just toggle auto scaling. I can just say enable or uh, disable. Um, and when it's enabled, this is when it will actually uh, maybe do this action when it's necessary. So, Alejandro, maybe you can explain a bit about uh, the reasons about how this page was designed. Uh, why do we only have CPU here? Uh, when would you use this? How would you use this? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, well, this is the auto-scaling page. Uh, right now, Rick just enabled it. Uh, we have like an initial cooldown period uh, of five minutes after you enable it, where it could actually trigger just to make sure that you also have your time, for example, to set these variables. Uh, right now, the variables that you see are all related to the CPU load of a, of a hypernode. Uh, we thought about different uh, possibilities, but we thought that CPU load is usually when, uh, well, it could, it's kind of like a very straightforward way to indicate when a server should actually be upgraded to a, to a next plan. Uh, but for example, uh, I can imagine that this page could be extended to, uh, for example, memory RAM or or disk space. Uh, but for that, right now, uh, our team with feedback group, uh, feedback group, we're getting like some uh, just feedback to see what can be improved and uh, our designer is actually working on it. So if you guys have any ideas, that would be great to know. But for now, the initial version we have this uh, CPU load where you can actually select. Okay, if my hypernode has been uh, on the CPU load of 75% for like the past 15 minutes, uh, then we actually have an agent that is constantly monitoring every single hypernode that we have. And whenever 
that is triggering your hypernode, then we will actually be upgrading to the next plan. And this will be to the next best plan, but the next best plan with more CPUs than uh, your current hypernode. So in this case, uh, this is a hypernode in Falcon S and then it will excrete, uh, to it will upgrade to a Falcon M uh, plan. And uh, here you have like the the daily uh, price of uh, three euros. This is how much you would pay. And then after one day, it will go back to, it will revert to the plan uh, where you are right now. So in this case, you would rock on S. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the extra price, right? So in, in case of an upgrade, if it's a temporary one, which it is in the case of, of auto scaling, it's like, you know, do, do you really want to bottle not having that extra capacity if it's just three euros extra for this next day? And because you will also be automatically downgraded uh, the next night or something, right? So it's uh, is it 24 hours or is it the next morning? It's in 24 hours. Okay, yeah. so 24 hours since the event that you were, were upgraded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you can also see this in the list of, of scheduled X rates, right? So you can go to uh, to this one. You can actually see it's happening right now. I configured some insane limit here, like 1% for one minute. So this is just going to trigger whenever. So it's actually doing it right now. Uh, something good to know about these, this x gate procedure is that uh, the downtime is very short, but the, the process of initiating this where you get a new server, we configure a new server, that can take a while. I think it's now like 20 minutes or something from the actual uh, signal where it starts, the auto scale process until it's completely finished. But only in the very end, it actually takes offline the services uh, because we do this uh, volume swap and the floating IP swap. The downtime is like uh, a minute or something. So... If you're really uh, uh, stuck for resources, if you're at the edge of your uh, um, service capabilities, that one minute downtime or something is going to be uh, really worth it if you know that then you're on the next step of, of capacity that is available. Um, so I think if you can go to the plan change page. Uh, and settings. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So we have this nice settings dashboard and. Ah, change plan. Okay. And then I think we have like a list of scheduled migrations as well. And. So this is actually now created by my auto scale action because I set this to one minute and, and load of very low and it just uh, started upgrading, it's upgrading right now, but it will also automatically downgrade uh, tomorrow then uh, after this 24 hours. And I think it was also possible to remove this uh, at some point or we're going to maybe make that? Uh, that will be possible. So like, for example, if there is a situation where you actually uh, are auto scaled, but you actually want to like downscale immediately, that will be possible from the auto scaling page. So once you're out to scale, for example, here, you will get like some message that it tells you like, okay, you're going to be downscale in uh, 20 hours, for example. But if you actually don't want to stay uh, in that plan the whole time and you don't want to pay the whole amount, you can just downscale immediately and then you will just pay for like the amount of time that you were actually uh, yeah. upgraded. So this also gives you back a bit of control of, of when to actually do this downscale action. And also maybe, you know, if you're, if you're figuring out you're running really well on this next biggest plan, then at that point you may also want to look at disabling autoscaling and just changing your plan to that plan it actually autoscaled to. So uh, going back to this change plan page, you can select uh, whatever plan you want here. And you can also select one of those plans that you're autoscaled to. So uh, one thing to know about autoscaling versus normal uh, plan changing, normal x scaling, is that when you autoscale to a, a new uh, uh, plan with more cores, uh, we keep the same disk size uh, as your current plan. And this is, for technical reason, this is important because normally when you upgrade to a bigger Hypno plan, you also usually get a bigger disk uh, until it caps out at a certain amount uh, and then you keep the same disk size. But if you go from a plan with a different disk to a different disk, uh, the, the process is different for migrating. And in auto scaling, we want to make things really quick. So that means we keep your same disk size and then we can do this, this trick with the volume detach, volume attach. Uh, so that also means that an auto-scaled uh, hypernode is, is not literally the same as just a normal plan change because you do have that disk size from your original base plan, as we call it. Um, so if I look at this hypernode now, uh, currently uh, the load isn't so high because it's not actually doing any anything. But I can also inspect the state of this auto-scale from the hypernode. So I can do a uh, live uh, log and I can see in real time... Um, also the state of, of what it's doing. So it's configuring nodes. That basically means that the new node is now being set up. And at some point it's going to be uh, finished and then it's going to uh, flip the DNS and do all those things. Uh, so I just wanted to show one more thing, which is that, okay, so I have this enabled. Maybe I want to test it out. Uh, what you could do, for example, is make some inefficient uh, PHP script. Uh, this is actually not installed by default, but you, you could come up with some PHP script that actually does like a very high load on your server. And you can kind of emulate uh, how this would happen. So in this case, I could go to... Uh... Oh. oh, yeah, I think I also have it over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, this one. I could just do this. 
And now it will just do this very high load for me. And then we can also kind of see this uh, radar thing uh, being a bit more. Uh, yeah. So you can also really see once it's enabled, what your current load is, how is it going, what should your threshold be. Uh, maybe you also want to monitor this in like a peak situation or you can maybe look back later on the dashboard graphs and kind of see what your uh, CPU level is. Like if it, is, it, is it within bounds? Uh, one thing sh you should know about uh, CPU overloading, like if you're really hitting that limit at some point, it's going to snowball. So if you're kind of overloaded, you will be really quickly overloaded at some point. So you probably want to set it at something like 80, 90%. It really depends on, on, on uh, the behavior of your application. So you can see here I'm now 100% CPU load. So what does this mean 100%? Uh, basically when you look at uh, a server, um, in HTOP you have uh, the load average and you have the amount of cores. And there's this calculation that you can make. It's like a back of the envelope uh, calculation where if the load is higher than the amount of cores, that basically means you're entering overloaded territory. And uh, if you don't know, this is the, the five minute average, the 15, the one minute average, the five minutes average and the 15 minute average. And so you can see that the load in this one, it's going up. Um, so what might happen is that maybe now you're out of scale to the next biggest plan, but your load is still high. And uh, I think there is uh, also a cooldown, right? So for, for when it would upgrade again to the next, next one. Yeah, yeah. So for example, let's say you have this uh, time in like, uh, I don't know, uh, 45 minutes. So in case you actually out of scale uh, to the next plan, it will wait at least like those 45 minutes because... Uh, you actually just want to measure that percentage of load with your new capacity. But for example, if the time is less than 15 minutes, uh, we do have a cooldown period of 15 minutes because initially when the server is booting, I can imagine that uh, currently the CPU load could also be high or, or other resources. So yes, we have like a minimum of 15 minutes, but usually it follows this parameter. Yeah, and so... Uh... It, it also depends on what you're doing at night uh, because we know that some people, they have just very heavy cons, uh, so they have like some uh, nightly product indexation going on or things like that. Uh, so if you want to get sophisticated about this, uh, like everything uh, on Hypernode, it's an API-first approach, so that means that this thing is just a front-end for the API and people can use uh, the API directly, they can interface with the API. So you could also say, I want to disable auto-scaling at night because I know I'm going to do heavy things and it's not like traffic that I want to auto-scale for. Uh, so you could do that, uh, but we also have a command line tool. I think it's called Hypernode Auto, Auto, Auto Scale, or is it part of Hypernode System CTL settings? Uh, CTL. Out scaling. Yeah, here we go. Auto scaling. Yeah, Auto scaling. So um, you can actually configure these things as well from uh, the command line. So if you don't want to bother with clicking in the control panel, or you're too cool for that, then you just want to maybe uh, use the command line. Well, you can also do that. Uh, you can enable, you can disable, you can scale back immediately. You can uh, you can you can all do all these things. So uh, yeah, we really try to make that a bit uh, efficient for those power users out there. But really, this is a convenience feature because this is like something you could do already before, but now it's just easily enableable and. Uh, yeah, I think this is a really uh, a good quality of life uh, improvement for people. But we're also happy to to hear any feedback about uh, how we can make this even more simple uh, for people to use. So uh, like we mentioned right now, it's about CPU load, but maybe uh, looking at RAM next time would be uh, interesting as well. Or date times, for example, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, so, so one thing that we see as well is that uh, because of the AI hype and things like that, uh, the, the call traffic uh, from bots and calls and things like that is really up. So uh, previously you would have maybe like uh, search engine bots getting stuck on their navigation and, and things like that. But now we also just see a lot of people uh, calling for uh, different reasons. And uh, so you got the, the open AI and things like that. They're actually not that bad, but you also have just random people trying to, to farm a lot of data. And this really has an impact on the performance of your shop. And uh, mainly because this is, uh, uh, if the bots are not well configured, they also hit pages that normal page, normal people don't really hit. So they are not cached. And that means that they will actually uh, cause a higher load on your uh, server as well than actual traffic. Uh, for example, in Magento classically, you would have layered navigation layered navigation issues. So that means that on a category page, maybe people select different filters. You would have like a shoe and a shoe size and a color. But then you can also select them all at the same time. And no real human would do this. Uh, but uh, maybe these bots, they, they do not differentiate and they get stuck in loops. And now you have all kinds of traffic. Uh, so if you know that that is the case for you, then you might be upgraded and upgraded and upgraded to, to deal with this uh, traffic that you don't really want. So we really recommend that you also keep an eye on why this is happening, why is your load so high. 
Uh, maybe we can provide some insights from that from support as well, but also uh, with the tools available on Hypernode, you can kind of keep an eye on the logs, uh, see your Nginx uh, logs, see what is happening in PHP FPM. Uh, are you processing real traffic? Is it just bots? And maybe you can just block those if you don't want to be out of scale every time. But um, yeah, I think it's better to be safe than sorry. And it's better to be uh, um, uh, fast with these upgrades uh, because uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a lot better to be in time with these things than try to fix it after the fact. Uh, if, if, your si if your site is really, really busy, then it will also be more difficult for the system to actually migrate you to a, a different server. Things will be changing a lot more uh, in the way while it's, it's migrating. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, everything we have to show for now about this feature. Uh, we have a do the emails, for example. Yes, yeah, I do want to show the email. I have it right here. Um, so when it's done, uh, you will get an email. It will basically look like this, uh, just to inform you that this happened, right? Uh, so in, in the next episode of uh, this uh, podcast, we also want to show you a different feature, which is uh, the Slack alerts, uh, so that we can also s uh, send you alerts in your Slack directly to say, uh, to say what is happening with your Hypernode. Like, if this happened, then you want to know about it. Um, but yeah, basically this is uh, all we have to say for now about this auto scanning feature. We hope that people uh, like using it and we're uh, really uh, curious about any feedback and uh, how people uh, use it and uh, what your experiences are. So uh, thank you a lot for watching yeah. and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.